Hello, my name's Eric, and I'll be talking about how to put your stuff where you want it on your front end. And this can certainly cause a lot of headaches. And there's two central concepts that if you don't know about them, they're a particular source of headaches, and that is the containing block and stacking contexts. And this applies no matter if you're using a framework or if you're using Tailwind or whatever you're doing, because this is basic browser specification level stuff. So this will always happen. I just want to mention, I learned a lot of this from a course called CSS from, for JavaScript developers. It's made by a guy called Josh Kumo. It's great. I recommend it. So in this lightning talk, I'll be using a lot of uh, playgrounds. So if I make some changes here, they're automatically reflected on the right side. All of these boxes have a very basic CSS reset. And there's a bunch of styles that aren't very important. I've just tucked them away in another file. So first, I want to talk about how you can position stuff without doing anything with positioning or layouts or whatever. And you can just use margin. So we know we can push stuff down with margin. But if I want to put the blue box on top of the red box, I can give it a negative margin. And I pull it up on top of the red box. So this is a nice trick. It's very useful. And you could, of course, give it a left margin as well to put it out to the side. However, if this was our only option, making websites would be a nightmare. So we have the position attribute. CSS, it has a lot of different layout modes. A lot of them are great. Flexbox is great. Grid is great. Float is weird. <laughs> but uh, this, we only have a few minutes, so we'll talk about normal flow and position layout. Normal flow, that's when you don't do anything. Position layout, that's when you use the position attribute. So the position, it has, uh, position attribute has these possible values. It can be static. That's the default. That's the same as doing nothing. Uh, relative, absolute, sticky, fixed, and we're not there yet. But one day, we'll get where I want it, probably. So again, we have these lovely boxes. And again, I want to move the blue box on top of the red box. But I want the pink box to stay where it is. So if I try my margin trick, this doesn't really work because then the pink box, oh, I'll follow, I'll come along. And we don't want that. So we can use our position. OK, position relative, nothing happened. But this has unlocked four new attributes, top, right, bottom, and left. So if I give it a top of 100 pixels, that's 100 pixels down from the top. If I give it negative 100 pixels, 100 pixels up. And the key is the pink box, it remains where it was. So position relative, you can move it around with top and left and bottom and right but the other elements will act as if it has never moved at all. So just to show you that we can do this, great. All right, that's position relative. What about absolute? Well, what position absolute does is that it hides pink boxes. <laughs> position absolute, it also unlocks the top, bottom, right, and left attributes, and it takes the element out of flow. So to the red box and the pink box, the blue box doesn't exist. But if we push it out, we see that the pink box is hiding underneath. Something that's a little weird, though, is that if I do top negative 100 pixels, it just goes way up. This is called foreshadowing. That's due to the containing block, and we'll talk about that later. But we have two more possible values for position to talk about, fixed and sticky. Here we have a page. It has a nice header. It has a lot of content, and it's great. And down left, we have a very helpful help button. But it's hiding down here, and I want it to be visible at all times. So to do that, I can target the help button, and I can fix it on the page. First, nothing happens. But again, we have top, bottom, right, and left. I'll give it a bottom of 32 pixels. And it's now 32 pixels from the bottom of my screen. 
So when you use fixed, the containing block is the screen or the viewport, which is it's also called. So when I scroll, the help button is always there. I can always get help. Fantastic. These article headings, I'll make them sticky, and sticky is sort of the weird one. Uh, again, nothing happens. I try top zero, nothing happens. But when we now scroll, we're about to scroll it out of view, but it follows. And then, as we get to the bottom of its parent element, its containing block, it stops. So top zero here, that's relative to the screen, but the element will respect its containing block. It will stay within its parent. Cool, this is tricky, but uh, you get used to it when you do it. So this is a great uh, segue to talk about the containing block, because in the previous example, the parent element of the headings, that was the containing block. So uh, I stole this from MDN. If the position is static, that's a default, or relative or sticky, this is a lot of text to say that the parent, uh, that the container block is what you think it is. However, if the position property is absolute, the containing block is formed by the edge of the padding box of the nearest ancestor element that has a position value other than static. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if the posi position property is fixed, the containing block is established by the viewport. Easy except that's not always the case. Uh, yeah, we'll see that as well. We'll start with the absolute thing. Uh, wow, great article. It has a lot of content and it has a button. And what we want now is to put the button in the center of the image. We know how to do that. We know about position. So I'll give this a position of absolute. Uh, I'll give it a top of zero just to test, and it jumps to the top of the page. All right, let's take a look at the markup to figure out what's happening here. You have the figure, that's the parent. We have our image, and then we have this, which is the call to action button, which is really a link. And because none of these parents have a position value that's n something else than static, it just goes all the way to the top. To do that, we need to give it a new parent. Let's use a div. Let's call it wrapper as a global class name. That's sure not to cause problems. And we'll wrap the div around the image and the call to action button. So let's target this wrapper. And let's give it a position of relative. So nothing changes with the layout, but now this becomes the containing block of this absolutely positioned element, so it stays within its wrapper. Now, to just put it in the center, we can use top 50% and left 50%. And these percentage values, these are based off the height and the width of the containing block. So the top left corner of the link or the button or whatever is pushed down to the center. One final CSS trick is to use a transform, and we can translate negative 50%, negative 50%, and those percentage values are relative to the height and the width of the element itself. Right. So that's one way to center it. OK, and remember the giant asterisk over fixed? This is one example of it. This is a great web shop, by the way. I recommend it. Um, we have an Add to Cart button. It's fixed to the top right. Here is another version of the same web shop, but this time the header is also fixed. And you see in the markup, here's our header, here's our button, and here's stuff that isn't important. But a normal feature when you scroll on web pages is that the header goes away, and when you scroll back, uh, it appears, so you can sort of hide the header. Um, and it, that happens here by applying the hidden class, and the hidden class transforms the header up top, so we just move it out of the way with a transform. It's a common way to do it. So let's hide this header, and the cart button goes away. Well, that's weird. 
what happens is that one of the asterisks is that if th there's any parent element that has a transform value other than none, that becomes the containing block of any fixed element. Um, which is weird. Luckily, the fix here is easy. You take the button, you move it out of the transformed element, and now stuff works as you expect. But if you don't know about it, that's a true headache. All right, we have a bit of time to talk about the stacking context. And the stacking context has to do with CSS. Uh, everything has to do with CSS, with the set index. And st stacking context, you can think of them as floors. So I can use a set index to sort of put one card on top of the other card, and I can do that inside this floor. But no matter how high a set index I give this card, this floor will still be above it. So even if I give this card set index a billion, we're still constrained to being this inside this floor. Uh, this can also be a source of headaches. Uh, wow, I'm not a great website. This one has a cookie banner, and we've just talked to our designers, and they want the cookie banner to be on the top. Uh, we'll use position, we'll spell it correctly, and we'll put it on top like that, and it goes below the header. No surprises there. The header has a position relative to make set index work, and we gave it a set index of two, so we'll just take our cookie banner, this has a position of fixed, so set index will work. And let's give it set index 3 to put it on top of our header. It doesn't work. So what people usually do now is they try 10, and then they start mashing the cube. <laughs> and at this point, people usually burn their computer and go move out in the forest. But we know about the stacking context, so we can fix it. The header defines a stacking context, and it does this because it has a position other than static and a set index other than auto. That's when you define a stacking context, or one of the ways you do it. Main also defines a stacking context, and it is below the header. So anything inside main will forever be below the header. But in this case, we don't really need the set index for main. So if we take this away, it works. Or another option here would be to take our cookie banner, and we could move it outside of main. And that also works. But if you don't know about stacking context, if you don't know that this happens, it's a true pain. And you might say, well, that's stupid. Set index 1 gagillion should always go on top. But sometimes it's useful, and we'll see an example. Here we have a software as a service pricing page. Um, it has a couple of cards, and we what we want to do now is we want to use set index to move the pro card on top of the other cards. We don't need to do anything with position. It's a flex child, so set index will work. This is another sort of weird CSS thing. But let's do set index 2. OK, great. It's on top of the other card. But we have also introduced a bug. So if I try to scroll down, and it goes above my header. OK, that's no worry. I can just go target the header, and I can give it a set index of 4. And that fixes it. But it's I really don't like it, because at some point, I'll have to put something on top of my header. And what set index? I'll give it a set index of 100, maybe, because this will always be on top. And I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. But then something needs to go on top of that. And that gets set index 2,000. And yeah, it's not a great situation. So what we can do is we can create a stacking, in a stacking context instead. We can make sure that whatever goes inside main always remains below the header. So let's give this a set index of 1. And right now, the card goes on top. But if we target main, and we can use the CSS rule that does one thing and one thing only, it creates a stacking context. When I scroll down now, it's below, because we've made sure the header element will always be on top of the main element. And if we need to put something on top of that, 
we can just create another element down below the main element and put that on top of that. No set index words necessary. All right, that's my time. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to reach me, you can use my email. And if you want to see the slides, they're on my GitHub repo.